Hey, hey, Mystic Magic Podcasters. We are up for another wonderful time today. Our guest is the Reverend Mary Beth Spear. My friend, she is an ordained religious science minister. She's a metaphysical teacher. She's a mentor and a writer. She's been a new thought leader in the human potential movement for 30 years. And she's been focusing on the intersection between science and spirituality. Well, she's co-pastored two religious science centers for over 14 years. She's presently involved in religious science and unity churches in Chicagoland, speaking and leading study groups and accredited classes. And she currently serves on the board of directors for the affiliated New Thought Network, also referred to as Anton. She's received dual bachelor and master's degrees in religious studies from the Emerson Theological Institute. Welcome, Mary Beth. Hi, Celeste. It's good to see you. Yes, I'm glad to see time. you. <laughs> yeah. So listen, you've been in this human potential movement for over 30 years. What called you to do this work for humanity? I, I you know, I, I thought about that question because you preloaded that question for me. And, you know, Celeste, I think it was pretty organic. It, it wasn't something where I set out to pursue it. it it's as if it pursued me you know i thought back on how life leaves clues and i mean even all the way back when i was 19 and i went to a junior college and i didn't know what in god's name i was going to take and one of the first things i took was comparative religions mm. uh, started taking philosophy um i've gone i've gone down the rabbit hole a number of different ways you know started started as a, a very conventional methodist which i didn't even really understand what that meant and, and then just became very eclectic. Um, everything from going clear in Scientology back in the 70s, all the way through to uh, giving up all forms of, of uh, organized religion or disorganized religion. And probably the thing that really started me back on my path was when I got uh, pregnant with my now 36 year old son. And I started reading um, Out on a Limb. And I, Shirley MacLaine had me with hello on that one. And, <laughs> short, and shortly after that, my, my then husband introduced me to Unity churches. And I started going to a little Unity church out in a place called La Crescenta in California. You probably know where that is. Yeah. And uh, it just, uh, I've been on the path ever since. Kept going. Well, you know, you've had an inner... Uh, uh, an interest in the intersection between science and spirituality. Tell me more about what that means to you. Well, I, um, I, I think I'm more the techie than the mystical in my pursuit mm -hmm. of my own spirituality. I, am, I, I, I feel so excited when I can understand quantum physics and I begin to realize that that has been intuited all, all the way back through uh, in the very beginning of time, the very beginning of, of revelations in mankind. The fact that Jesus could talk about the mustard seed and moving the mountain just to me was the wave to the particle, if you will. Um, I think okay. one of the things that really was a hook in my mouth was when I, I listened to the book tape by Gary Zukoff, The Dancing Wooly Masters, Mm -hmm. And I was never good at math. I was never good at science. But when he said something in there, he said, um, physics without the math is pure enchantment. <laughs> and like, wow. Wow. And so I got very excited about it and I began to really pursue it from there. And then of course I found science of mind and I've always loved that, that aspect. I found judge Thomas Troward. I fell in love with the Troward. And so it just, it, it, it's just to me, it's a, it's a weave and it's a time who, it, it's our time. It's the time has come for it. The idea that science so, and spirituality would walk hand in hand. Well, it, it, it always has been. We're just coming to a greater realization of it as it's it. become so um, impossible to deny. Mm -hmm. you, you said you, you follow Troward, so you're more interested in the law aspect of uh, the science of mind teaching. Would you like to share a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, 
I, I think the reason that I felt so enamored with the law is because of the fact that a law is a neutral is neutral that it is not something that moves around for me up until the time i got into metaphysics my god was outside of me and mm -hmm. it was it it was the the atypical you know the the judge the 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 man mm -hmm. with the beard was always a little pissed off if you were a little ticked off at if whoever was not in its favor and and it was very capricious and I couldn't understand that when I found the law and I began to understand principle and the fact that things things don't move around in the law it's always going to be there there's ways we can explore law and understand more fully the laws that that we are working with so that they can work for us better because we are more obedient to them and we learn more about it is very different than the idea that laws change. Right, because you had like spiritual laws and you got physical laws, mm -hmm. physical laws like buoyancy and aerodynamics and, and uh, spiritual laws like the law of correspondence, the law of cause and effect, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so forth. Now, what is it about teaching metaphysics that you enjoy? Because I learn it as I teach it. Um, if there's any one thing I feel really compelled to do, it's to teach it. I, 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 I just feel like a fish in water when I'm able to sit and talk to people. I, I, one of my favorite modalities of teaching, quite frankly, is to do study group. I've been doing book study groups. Um, I, I began really understanding a lot of metaphysics and actually did Course in Miracles and several other wonderful books, including studying the, the book of the Bible to Revelations, uh, through a wonderful group of women, older women, in fact, um, some of them were actually over 100 years old, although I didn't know it at the time, and they came out of the Glendale Church of Religious Science. So back in the um, 80s, early 90s, I was doing study group with a whole group of women and we would actually sit and read a book. And we, we would not just read the book, we would ingest and embody it. And that became such a fun and wonderful way for me to explore metaphysics that I've kept that up for years. In fact, I do a um, Monday morning book group at a Unity Church here in Chicago that's going on over five years now. And I even have an in-home book group of friends that get together here in my home that have been meeting every Tuesday for over seven years. So we read books and we we read them paragraph by paragraph. We're doing it by Zoom now because of the, the right. COVID-19. And we right. we don't, <laughs> I, always say, I always say I'm the most economical book cl club you can join because it takes a very long time to get through a book because we park you, on it. Yeah, but you make it personal. It's not just a kind of a, a cursory exercise. We do. We do. So you've ministered to religious science centers, and, and we know the ministry is no cakewalk. Um, you've also been involved in organizational leadership, first for Centers for Spiritual Living and now for the, uh, the Affiliation of New Thought Network. Mm -hmm. What keeps you wanting to serve both as a, a spiritual servant, but also um, in organizational leadership? Well, again, it feels innate. Mm. It feels like what I'm here to do. Um, I find a lot of joy and service. What I, 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 <laughs> I mean, the, the, the uh, frame, the form of church uh, got very tedious. So um, that's one of the reasons I walked away from pulpit ministry. And that was about eight years ago. Um, I, I discovered I was spending more time making and forming the church than I was able, really able to experience being the minister of the church. And that came more out of, out of my, um, my needing to do as opposed to my needing to be. It, it's right. interesting. I, I actually was with Religious Science International and at a time where Religious Science International and United Churches came together uh, we integrated and then we became the Centers for Spiritual Living. And after 
I left Centers for Spiritual Living as a pulpit minister. I, I had two pulpits, uh, one in Religious Science International and then through uh, Centers for Spiritual Living. Um, after I left the pulpit, I continued for another year to serve as a regional support coordinator for Centers for Spiritual Living for the Midwest. And I, I actually took this volunteer position and, and kind of turned it into um, a full-time job. And I realized after that, part of the reason that I was doing that was because I needed to have something to say when people would say, what are you doing now? Oh. And so mm -hmm. I, I realized I needed to be doing something. So I, um, the, the part about leading or be, being, being part of the, the ability to move new thought movement forward is why I do what I do. Okay. It's not so much because I want to have to be a leader of it. It's just that I feel this organization, the, the, the whole movement itself is so vital. And it's one of the ways that I can help serve the movement moving. Great. <laughs> Not sure. I'm not sure if that mad rant came came across well. But. Well, what I what I heard you say was it may have started off to um, to be a little bit um, busy busy work. Mm -hmm. it, it really, it really is about moving the movement forward. Yeah. Uh, what do you like about the affiliation of New Thought Network? Well, this, the Anton is is the affiliated New Thought Network. Um, it's an organization that actually was founded in 1992, and its founders, some of them came out of, well, it, it began really being a religious science organization and teaching the science of mind in a, in a more freer form, perhaps, than the organizations of United or Religious Science International were able to teach it because the both United and Religious Science International had a framework and the people that came out of Religious Science International and United and formed Anton wanted more freedom of the ability for pastors to be able to be more creative in their teaching, um, to have more freedom in their ability to be their own authorities in their churches. So back in those days, I still remember um, being a pastor with RSI. And there was even a little bit of a of kind of a smugness amongst us where we, we thought of them as a no rules club. <laughs> it was an, al an alternative way to go do what we all were doing, but without the form. Um, I've come to have so much love for Anton. And I first came to know uh, Dr. Angelo Pizzello, who's been a part of Anton for a very long time, and he and his wife, Dr. Stella Pizzello, founded the Emerson Theological Institute. And the Emerson Theological Institute is actually a, a teaching aspect of Anton, but they're not the same organization. And Angelo has been described as New Thoughts Uncommon, yes. <laughs> I, those who come to Ann, Aunt Dr. Angie, we call them, those who come to Dr. Angie with the idea of ministry, some form, some, some new way of doing new thought, and his, his answer is, let's make it happen. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, how can we make that that you have fit into what we already have created? Um, the first time I ever met the people in Nanton was back in... Um, I think it was probably about 2011 or 12, something like that. And I just found them to be the warmest, most loving, open group of people. They just, you know, the, the cliche, they had me at hello. Um, well, you know, to be on the board can be pretty intense. It sounds like it might be a little bit more relaxed if you're in an Anton environment. <laughs> well, being on the board with it is, is again, I'm back in the form. But I have to say, it, you know, with, with Anton, there, we've always had a credo that consciousness is the sole authority and love points the way. And Great. I have found that even though we have our moments, any, but any organization where you have free thinkers, <laughs> like people who are a new thought, who come together to create something, there's going to be a lot of opinions <laughs> in that group. 
And we're not a board that, that votes to consensus, although I would say that pretty much just about anything we've ever voted on, we do arrive at that unanimous vote, but not without the work. And the um, Anton came together, we came together this year and had a, a board retreat. We meet once a year um, for a retreat of about four days and we come together face to face. The rest of our meetings are by Zoom. And we actually looked at where we were going and Dr. Dennis Merritt Jones, who has been a facilitator for my groups and, and for my husband and I a um, few times on our own to help us move to the next dimension, if you will, actually came in and worked with our group um, on creating a new vision statement, discerning a new vision statement, a new direction for Anton. And what we realize we are all about at this point in this juncture of time is our new vision is uniting the new thought movement. And the, the expanded version of that vision is uniting the new thought movement through the conscious evolution of every member. But you know, a new thought movement is not just religious science, isn't unity and divine science and other people involved aren't? aren't Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and all are welcome in Anton. There, right. there was no one that isn't, there are no organizations. In fact, we do have unity folks. We do have um, religious science folks. We do have some divine science folks. We've got independent ministries in Anton. Right. Uh, the the whole idea Any is there are people. I'm sorry. Any home of truth people? I'm not sure. I don't know. Not yet. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. But with the with the whole idea about uniting is that there there are no guard walls between us. We're all new thought shares the same precepts. We we have the same realization of the one mind, the one God, the one principle, the overarching presence out of which all arises out of which we all have make our we we live move and have our being and that our thoughts are creative and our thoughts are things there there's no differentiation between one one um thought school or denomination of new thought over another um okay. some of the separation i think has come about with the idea that each organization unity United Churches of Religious Science, um, now Centers for Spiritual Living, Divine Science, the ones, the organized religions have their own teaching path. And there's no incompatibility with that in Anton. All, all can be members of Anton and still be part of their, their uh, denomination. Got you. Look, I'm coming back home to Chicago soon and thankfully the weather will be better, but how do you get through the gloomy months of winter? What do you do spiritually that keeps the light within alive? Oh, <laughs> weather is my, is part of my um, master class, I guess you could say. Um, I learn a lot with my discontent with winter. Um, I, when you think about what I came out of, I grew up in Southern California. I know you and I have both been California people. Um, I grew up in Southern California. I had never shoveled snow and I didn't even know what a snowblower was. And when we accepted the call to come back and assume a work here in the suburbs of Chicago, I had no, <laughs> I had no idea what I was coming into. But that was 13 years ago. So one of the first things I had Michael do is take me to Home Depot and we bought a snowblower and I've been at it ever since. But internally, um, <laughs> there's a way for you to uh, generate your own warmth and, and, and to kind of foster your own wisdom. Sometimes during winter months, we have more opportunities to be still and know, as it were. I'm just wondering, are you asking me, so you getting ready for winter again? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm ready to embrace summer. Yeah, I think, you know, for me, there there's a lot of sweetness in the winter. Um, I did actually go out and buy one of these happy lamps. Oh, mm. or Because there was a winter where we really had, a lot of our winters in Chicago, as you well know, are not just cold, they're gloomy. Mm -hmm. Overcast days blend into overcast days, plus they're short days. So it, when, when I am able to really do my work, which I, I do more work 
and during the winter, probably even than I do during the summer on my consciousness. I, I like to think of it more as almost like cave time. Um, winter for me is a time where I can be more introspective. Um, it, it gives me permission to just sit and read a book and to, and to just be beyond that, just to sit and think mm -hmm. and, and to not feel like there's anything I need to go do other than the snow. <laughs> go move, go move <laughs> the snow and then come back and sit and think. <laughs> What would you like our audience to know about uh, what you're doing? Uh, do you want to let us know about the website to Anton or any particular class or event that's coming up that you want, you want people to attend or look at? Well, Affiliated New Thought Network does have a web or a Facebook um, for community happenings. And people can go to the Anton Facebook community happenings and there's a wonderful ever-growing um, aggregate list of the zoom classes the the zoom services that are being done there's a it's it's a very very uplifting Facebook opportunity you can just fall down into that rabbit hole and come out feeling a lot better for it mm -hmm. there's also a website that we've we've just been restructuring our website and the website right. you can get to just going to newthought.org and it takes you right into our Anton website and you can just play around in there and, and go to the directory and see the wonderful, wonderful cl collective, eclectic group of members that we are. Okay. Well, wonderful. I so appreciate you being with me today, my friend. I, I miss you. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the not too distant future. And um, I really appreciate your yes and uh, your diligence and your commitment to truth and spirituality and uh, give my love to Michael and the dogs and, and everybody else. <laughs> well, I'm excited. Celeste, I'm so excited you're coming home. <laughs> Sweet home Chicago, right? <laughs> Are you looking this forward to coming magic. home? Hmm? This is Mystic Magic, exploring our spirit to understand our lives.